Welcome, welcome to the best 591 podcast with Forrest Kelly. Did you know when olive oil met wine at a party, they discovered they both make everything taste better? And we know how wine loves olive oil, always bringing out its best qualities. Let's talk olive oil. The best 5-Minute Wine Podcast. I mean, I mean <laughs> I'll... Olive oil should be made from from olives for starters. Unfortunately, a lot of the stuff in in Italy isn't even because the mafia has gotten their hands into that world as well. What? And so often olive oils that get exported are made from soybean oils and put a little bit of chlorophyll in there to give them that nice green color that makes them look a little more sincere and and off you go. So, uh, you know, in terms of what you look for, it's tough because even the ones that say made in Italy aren't always made in Italy. Uh, But we, I don't know, at at Remessa Rosholi, we have all the just small artisans that again, and that's just the way we we work with. We go meet them all in person before we ever, we never let someone just send a sample and say, okay, that was good. We'll take it. We go meet people. Rosholi has always done an extreme amount of research on the products and the producers and the land where things are coming from. We go and see these places. We don't just, and you can tell this because we do videos. We have probably 600 videos of winemakers and cheese makers and olive oil producers on our YouTube channel. It's a labor of love, but it's uh, a lot of work, but it's the, the only way to really understand exactly what you're getting. So unfortunately, if if you're just in the average consumer, there's not a specific thing I could tell you to look for. Well, yes, yeah. So you're, you're putting the pressure on these people to produce and actually say what they are. So when you're you're uh, fact checking, as you will, but I've never interviewed a winery or anything to do with wine that had a, a tasting of extra virgin olive oil. There's different tastings, obviously. It's not the same taste for every olive oil, right? Oh, gosh, no, that's for sure. There's something like 600 different olive cultivars from north to south, and they vary. Usually the ones that come from the north are gonna be a little bit on the lighter side. The Tajasca olive is a little bit lighter that you find from like Liguria. Then you get into, I don't know, Lazio, Tusk. I don't really love the Tuscan olive oils personally, as much as I do some of the Lazio ones. There's Canino that I really enjoy. Those are maybe a little bit more on the kind of middle bitterness, middle spiciness. And then you get down to Puglia and Sicily, and you can start to end up having some pretty spicy, powerful, rich olive oils that maybe you wouldn't use on a salad, but you'd use more for grilling and cooking and they just bring out the maximum flavor in everything you're you're cooking the good stuff should almost make you cough and that's kind of scary for some people because they say why (laughs) why would i want to cough if it's good but that's when it's got all the polyphenols and all the the good juju in there that that makes it healthy for you so i see where where we can shop so everything that that everybody experiences kind of there they kind of if they want to take it home they can go into like a grocery store we basically, I mean, more or less anything you taste, you can almost bring home with you. Uh, everything's more or less available for takeaway. For shipping, we, we can ship wines and foods as well. Uh, there are some restrictions based on the countries of what can be shipped um, in terms of that. But we have online websites, so shop.remessarasholi.com. We also have shop.rasholiwineclub.com. Uh, and a lot of our products are now going to be even based in New York so that wines don't have to ship from Italy. They'll also ship from, from New York for the U.S. customers, and that'll allow them to receive the wines in a matter of two, three days, and or depending on where in the country, up to a week maybe, depending on where they are, instead of three to four weeks, which is the traditional shipping time for internationally for wine. Because Remessa Rascioli does everything top-notch, can't wait to hear about the wine club. Tell me about that. Yeah, so we have four different levels currently. Probably they will end up becoming three because the Legends level is we just can't accept new members because the wines are so allocated at that uh, level. Uh, but we basically have uh, one that would be about 800 per year uh, as the the what we call the Essential or Level 1 Wine Club. Uh, then the next one up would be around a little over 1,000 per year. The next one up would be 2,000 per year. And they're going to be 24 wines. All, all of them are going to include 24 wines. Based on the price point, you'll get different levels of wines. Like, for example, a Rosso di Montalcino would go in the level one, where a Brunello di Montalcino would probably go in the level two. And more of one that's maybe a, a vintage or, you know, slightly older Brunello could go in the level, the collector's level, the level three. But you're going to get wines from all over Italy, from generally speaking, like I said, really small producers. We try to mix up the varietals. We almost always include a Barolo in the level two and a Brunello. We want to give a, a nice uh, array of wines so that people are introduced to things that they're not familiar with and all the wines in general we want to be that are not accessible in the U.S. 
in the box, they're getting not only the wine, obviously, but to mention the QR code, the, the story behind it. The wine club is really meant to be a complete experience with wine. It's not just to be, you know, where you get your 12 bottles of wine, you open it up, you maybe have a brochure that you flip through it, throw it in the garbage, which is what most people, I mean, I was part of wine clubs, so I know how, how people use them. Uh, we wanted to really bring you as close as you could be to actually being on the vineyards with us because for us that's where the magic happens is walking on these vineyards with the producers listening to them tell their story what they're passionate about where their family maybe came from what got them into wine we want you to hear it from from their side of the story and to really immerse yourself in the experience and not just um, have it be about consuming wine. We want people to drink with care is kind of the phrase we use, which is understanding because people also appreciate what they're drinking so much more when they know the story behind it. The best five minute wine podcast. Don't forget my favorite part. Please, please like and follow. Oh, 